Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a video for you guys where we are going to be trying to research every innovation in the game as quickly as possible. If you're new to the game in Crusader Kings 3, if you own enough counties with your player's culture, you get to decide, for better or for worse, what technology your people will discover next. The speed at which you research an innovation depends on a few things like your player's learning skill and the average development in the counties with your culture. If you want to know more about research and development, you can check out this video I made on the topic. But today, we are here to speedrun the innovation tree, so let's just get started. Like I said, we are going to be trying to speedrun every innovation in the game as quickly as possible. I saw some comments on places that were suggested to start, and really what I'm looking for in a starting location, if I'm trying to have the fastest research in the game, is one, there has to be high development in that area, and two, there has to be a relatively small culture so that it is easy to increase the development in the lands of those culture and not have it be affected by other people. If we go into the culture map, you can see Norse would not be a good idea for this playthrough because I would be a relatively small nation, Norse nation, and the development in these huge areas is pretty bad. One place I thought that might be good would be Sardinia because they have their culture is only on these two islands here, but in Sardinia the development is relatively low. You can see compared to Rome, which I think is in the 20s, um, at an 867 start, which is what we are doing. Or another place that some people mentioned was in Spain to play, because if we look at the development in Spain, you can see that it has some really high places, especially Cordoba, which has really, really high development, one of the highest in the game actually at this start date. But if we look at the culture in this area, you can see it's all Visigothic, and these people who own this land are Bedouin, and you'll see here the Bedouin culture is huge also and is all over here. So it would be a hard time to raise the average development in all Bedouin counties if I started converting this land. But that brings me to what I think is literally the most perfect start location for this challenge ever. And I think it is right here on the tip of India. So you'll notice that India has a ton of high development places on the... Uh, the Ganges River, but if we look at the culture in these areas, this one here is pretty big, and if we look at the map, I could play as these guys here, but you're surrounded by some other strong people who have more military than you, so it might be a bit tough, but I think down here, one of these duchies would be the perfect place to play as, because it has one culture, this southern tip of India here, the Tamil culture, and if we look at the development in this area, you can see it's super high. I think it's like 20, 18 to 20 in all of these areas here. There's only a couple places that don't have high development, but if I take those and improve it, I think we'll have an, a very good research speed pretty much this entire game. I'm pretty sure I'm going to start as these guys here in the middle, just because they have a bit more military than their neighbors. So without further ado, I'm going to get started. So now that we started, you can see the development, it's 25 in the capital, which is huge. So like I say in all my Crusader Kings games, the beginning of the game is where you have the most shit you gotta do. And this game is gonna be no different. First of all, I'm gonna look at my lifestyles and see in military, we actually already have this Serve the Crown perk, which gives you a control growth bonus of 0.3 per month. So when I do take land from my neighbors, I'll already be getting an improved uh, control from that, from this bonus, so that's going to be super helpful already. So I'm just going to go down the learning tree because this is in fact the focus of the game, to have the most learning so that I can increase my research speed. So I don't think I'm going to go down this right away, I think I'll start with theology focus and that is because I want the extra piety per month because there's a few really interesting things about this location that you might not know. So the first thing is actually that if we look at the religion map and my player is part of this Hindu faith, but you can see this Hindu faith here has a holy site up here and then some other holy sites uh, to the in Northern India. But the faith that actually is the faith of the people in my capital if I click on this one, you can see they have a holy site in one of the places that I already control. Wow. So if I click here, you can see I can construct a special building, but only if I was part of this religion or the religion that's in my capital here, which is this Jain faith. So I think I'm going to try to build up enough faith to be able to convert to this religion. See, if I go to convert to it, I would need 
um, about 100 more, so not too much more. And then I would be able to build this holy site, which will net me a ton of gold. And there's also actually another special building I can build over here. So I'll probably try to take this right away and then build that special building. Other than that, if we take a look at our innovations, which is the total goal of this game is to get to the late medieval era and get every single one of these innovations. And what's really cool about playing as this culture in India is it's super advanced. So we could actually already start going into the early medieval era, but there's, there's actually a hard cap on doing that where you have to wait until 900 AD. Normally it depends on how many of these uh, texts you unlocked. You have to have a certain number of them. I think it's one more than half, but because we have a lot of them already and pretty much the most important ones, I would think, I guess I could do moats just for more fortifications. And you'll see it's gonna take about 43 years, which is already as a first innovation, super quick. The chance is pretty low because my player has low learning, but we're gonna remedy that. But what is quick is the average development in Tamil counties is plus 0 0.32. That's really huge. If you compare that to some of the cultures in Europe, in Polish counties, it's 0 0.04 only, which is like nothing. And even somewhere good, like in a French county, it's 0 0.12 which is still really uh, slow compared to where we are here. The next thing I want to do is find a spouse for myself. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of cogenital uh, trait breeding because I do want intelligence because it'll make monthly lifestyle experience go up. And also because these people tend to have a lot of learning, which is going to help because I plan on putting my spouse on the learning focus instead of anything else. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get this lady over here. She seems good. I get an alliance too, which doesn't really hurt. And we'll start the game timer. Her with the intelligence trait, and she has 13 learning. So now if we go over here to our council and we put her actually on patronage, you'll see I get a plus six in learning. So now my player has 12 learning and I look at moats and you'll see it went down by, I already forgot what it was, seven years because now our fascination bonus is 32%. Also, if you look at our culture, we have two unique uh, bonuses here which are super cool so we have this uh, Woots steel and this gives a plus two damage to our heavy infantry so if we look at these guys you can see they're getting a plus two damage here which definitely doesn't hurt and we have access to the war elephants which you probably saw right here and I've never actually used these guys before in a game so I'm super excited you can see they have a crazy amount of damage and toughness but they do cost 400 gold to build so probably not the most um, efficient use of our gold, but definitely in the later game I can see myself making a ton of those just for fun. Other than that, I'm going to let it play out. I'm going to start fabricating a claim on these guys here, and uh, I'll update you guys as the game progresses. So I'm in the middle of this war over here for this county with my neighbor, and I just got my first perk, and I'm gonna go into the scientific perk, which will increase our fascination progress by 35%. So now, if we look at our research, you'll see it's 24 years, and we're getting a 48% uh, chance now. So a lot higher than before already. So we just finished this war, and the great thing about this is that we get this beautiful piece of land with 24 development, that's going to be a huge bonus for our gold income. And you can see we can construct a special building over here, which is really cool. You'll see the owner gets a uh, plus one stewardship per devotion, which is super awesome. Also some piety and renown, which is really cool. So I'm going to try to build this as soon as I can. But I think first I'll build my, I'll save up gold for this building here. I have enough faith now to convert from my religion. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the scholarship focus just for the extra two learning it's going to give me. And if I go ahead and look at the faith screen, I'm going to convert to this faith here because again, they have a holy site in my land that I already own, which is cool. Also, they're going to be naked, so that's just great. And they have this cool uh, tenant here that actually gives us a plus one domain limit, which is pretty good but we cannot declare holy wars. But honestly, this game, I'm not trying to declare many wars. I'm just trying to get all the land that's part of this culture and then just raise that development through the roof. Like I don't need to have a huge plot of land for this game. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert. Some of my guys will convert with me, which is great. I just realized taking this religion might be a tough time 
because I'm gonna have trouble blurring out all of these things that are gonna happen throughout the game. So hopefully I won't forget anywhere. Oh yeah, and I forgot the most important part. So I converted to this religion now. And if we look at this place here that has the holy site available, now we can see the grand temple and we can construct it once we have a thousand faith and it'll give us plus two tax per month and a nice bonus to our taxes in this county as well as some other great things. So I forgot about one of the um, caveats to this awesome start location and that is that our religion and laws have equal gender laws which is is good because it means we can have women on our council but it is not good because it means that our daughters can also inherit our land which is going to be a pain that just pretty much doubles the amount of kids that can count to your succession and will just increase the splitting of our land so 24 years from the start of the game we finished our first innovation so pretty good pretty good speed maybe i'll do like average speed of innovations at the end of the game and see what our average is but you can also see that while i was researching this this gravel kind actually had been going up a ton because you can see we had this exposure bonus which means we have the same religion as another culture group and they have this already unlocked so that means that we were getting a huge uh, speed bo bonus to it so you can see it's done in three years with our fascination bonus but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and choose this one to start researching which is going to be discovered in 20 years with our fascination bonus and then this one still will only have seven years so we're getting kind of a two for one deal here okay so i just died which is okay our son is pretty good but we have a major problem which is this land split to my sister but i should have a claim on it yeah on the whole land here so that's really good and i do want this land back that is for sure because i just took it and there's some very nice um, land here, especially this this piece of land, which has uh, space for a building, a holy building. But what sucks about dying is I literally was missing three gold to be able to get this thing online because I had the perk that lowered the price. Okay, so I got really lucky and just by taking the capital I got 100% war score. So I will enforce that demand and what sucks about this is now that it's split she's my vassal my sister is my vassal and I don't own the land myself and I really want to hold this land I guess I'll wait and see what I want to do about revoking her lands in a bit because my perfect game would be to hold these two duchies for all of the game and pretty much all of the counties in both those duchies Okay, so I just got enough gold to finally build this grand temple. It's going to take six years because I'm not in the stewardship tree to lower the speed. But that's okay, I don't mind it taking a while. And I think after I build this, I'm thinking of moving my capital over there just to get the extra one gold per month bonus. But we'll see how it looks when I'm done. And what's nice about finishing that is I can finally start using my gold income on my military, which I've kind of been ignoring, and also upgrading my buildings in my lands here. So I think I have decided to revoke my sister's titles. I'll probably start a war, but I, I should have enough military strength to... Oh, it actually didn't even start a war. That's great. I must have got a good roll, but I will... I do want all of the titles, which is kind of bad. But I think this guy won't join because he's a good friend of mine. So I don't think it'll be too bad. And we literally just got her best title. So I think she should be pretty weak now. So I'll go ahead and just revoke all her titles. So I just finished this war. And now she is locked in prison. So when you finish your war with a vassal after trying to revoke them, they go in jail and then you can easily just revoke their titles and they have no other option but to accept. It's going to get me some penalties and some pretty big penalties at that. But honestly... That's okay, as long as this guy doesn't hate me too much, because he's my only other vassal. And now we have all this lovely land again. My guy's only 24, so it didn't take too long to re-get this land. And now I should be able just to make gold and spend it on improving my land and improving my military to stop any of these northern neighbors from getting a little bit ambitious and trying to take my land. Also, we're almost at 900 AD, so then we'll be able to get these lovely early medieval texts started. So we just finished constructing our grand temple here, and look how beautiful that is. Look at that. So now you can see our gold income has skyrocketed over here. Here comes the money! 
So honestly, I think I will move my capital here. You can see the gold increased even more. And honestly, the 20% bonus will suit me better if I have the capital because it gives you the bonus of one gold. So everything just stacks nicely. And you can actually see our total gold increased by doing that anyway. So I think that was the right decision. So we just hit enough gold to go over here and create our kingdom. Look at that. Beautiful. Very interesting logo. I think it's like a seashell. And that's lovely because it gives us an extra domain. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is since I don't need my extra domain limit, which I'm getting from my wife, I'm going to switch her to patronage, which gives me more learning. So now I'm at 26 learning. And if we look here, eight years until we get this, which is great. And we are starting to unlock the medieval era text, the early medieval era text. You can see being helped by the development also. Okay, so I just had a son and he actually has the intelligent trait, which is awesome. So now I have a son and a daughter, both with intelligent. So I think I'm going to let them both develop and then see which one's better and then choose which one to play as based off that. But I already have the restraint perk so i'm going to embrace celibacy right away because i think two kids is the perfect amount for me in this game okay so we just went up in our culture level which means we now have access to these early medieval technologies which is super cool and honestly i think i'm going to go for this one right here communal government because it raises the existing development penalty that we have and that's going to help a lot because a lot of my lands are already over our current cap which is 20 development so raising it to 35 will just help get all these lands developing a lot quicker. Also, this guy here to my north has a claim on my land here, and he has some powerful allies. He's allied to this big kingdom over here to my north and this other kingdom to my south. So I think I should really take him out before he has the chance to declare war at me with his vassals. So because he only has one county, if I'm able to take this county before any of his allies join the war, I'll be at 100% war score. So he called his allies in and now I am taking the land and we have done it. So we got the land before he was able to get his vassals involved in the war. So I can easily just enforce my demands and we got his land, perfect. As far as things are going in this game, we have six years until we get our um, communal government tech, which will increase our development penalty, which will be good because we're kind of stalled right now in our development. I'm increasing these ones here on the side, but these places here aren't really growing that quickly. So after I unlock that tech, it should be good. And then I'm going to have to go for manorialism, which will let me build this grand temple in my lands there. And it will also allow me to start building my duchy buildings, which are actually It'll also allow me to start building my duchy buildings down here, the economic ones, which I think will go a long way um, to help in my game. As for my kids, my daughter actually has some really, really nice traits. She has two virtues and the other one is humble, which I like. And my son, not as good. So I think I'm gonna play as my daughter for the next, uh, my next character's life. So I have available perk and I can now get the scholar trait here which should go a long way. It helps with the development, which is pretty cool. And it also gives me plus five learning. So my character has 44 learning, which is really, really good. And you can see we only have four years left now. I think when I hit 400 gold, I'm gonna create my first war elephants, uh, men at arms regiment. And it's gonna be pretty cool. I'll have to keep them away from, uh, from the mountains, but anywhere else, hills, anywhere, because I don't think I have many wetlands, they'll be a dominant force. Like, look at this damage they're going to be doing. Okay, here we go. Let's get these elephants in our army. Look at that. Honestly, I thought it would be more expensive. They only have a maintenance of three gold per month, which actually is not too bad at all. Okay, so we finally got the communal government tech. And I think the next thing I'm going to go for is this tech right here because it'll allow me to build my uh, holy temple. And you can see we're getting 84% chance now, which is huge because of our high learning. And it will only take about 14 years. And now if we go around and take a look, we should see that all of our places are going to have a nice bonus to the development now because the existing development penalty should be a lot less than before. So let's see if I go and put this on my capital. Yeah, you'll see we're going to get three 
development per gro per month because um, we raised the cap to 35 from 20. So we have a small problem here. I was taking a look at the culture map and I realized they converted this county up here to my culture and this is not good because these places only are pretty low development compared to my land and I don't want them to continue spreading my culture like that. Like you can see this lady's part of my culture. If she continues to spread it to all these low developed lands it'll bring my average development down. So I think I'm actually going to use this buy claim buy claim option here which just costs a bit of faith and I have tons of faith and now I get a unpressed claim on this whole place so if I do that you can see I can now declare war for the whole duchy which is actually pretty good okay so I just wanted to show you guys how important it is to increase some of the lowest developed lands that are of your culture so like I had said when I took that land before it was at um, 11 development and now since I put my steward there increase it already in just a year or two I'm not sure um, increase it by 4 to 15 and now if we go ahead and look in our uh, average development gain we went up to 0 0.4 so just by that we already increased a lot so I'm gonna go ahead and keep increasing this until it's almost until it's similar to uh, some of the other places like around 20 probably and then I'll go back to putting some more in our capital so we're about to get enough money to build our second um, grand temple slash wonder of the game and this one doesn't give us gold flat out but what it does give us is a 20 percent gold uh bonus which is pretty good and then development growth which actually will help a lot in this game as well as this stewardship per level of devotion which is pretty cool so we're going to const start constructing that it'll take four years but i think it'll be very valuable for our for our empire okay so my player finally died he lived to be 66 now we are playing as his daughter, who for some reason is stressed out, but she has three sons already. We got this guy, genius. Wow. This guy, genius. Wow. And then this guy, intelligent. Uh. So it's looking pretty good. Okay, so my second son just turned 16, and he got the best trait for the learning perks. So I think I'm going to have to play as him, because look at that. 19 learning. So if we look at our succession now, you'll see that. Our son, our genius son with good traits, good stats, um, will get pretty much all of our land and then we'll only lose these three counties up here to our genius daughter. And I think that'll be okay because having another like king slash queen will help our renown a lot. I think I'll get another plus one renown from it and we'll be able to make an alliance and hopefully she'll rise up and be really strong and be a, a good ally for us in the future. We now have two lovely temples in our land. Look at that. And we are now getting a good amount of stewardship from it, piety, and the taxes increased in this land. So here's something that might be interesting for you guys. The way that counties work is you have all these slots which are called baronies. And in these slots you can either build castles, cities, or temples. And you can only build a castle if you already have one of each, of each type of different barony. So what I started doing is I had my domain limit was increased to 8, just from my player's stewardship being a lot better than my last one. But I didn't really want to take more land, like I'm trying to kind of play a tall game. So what I decided to do is in this county, we already had one temple, one city, and one castle. So I went ahead and I built another castle here because domains don't count how many counties you have, but it's how many actual holdings you have in those counties. So let's say if I held this temple, this castle, and this castle, I would get, be getting three domains from this one county. So I went ahead and I did that, and then I again started building another castle over here in this land. And since this castle is built on farmlands, I have a choice of a ton of different buildings I can build in here. But I think I'm going to go ahead for the manor houses, just because they give me a ton of gold. And also the cool thing about these secondary castles in these counties, you can always grant them quickly to a low noble. They often come back to you when that person dies. So if you are above your limit, you can just grant it away and then you'll end up getting it back later, which is pretty awesome. So what I've been going through and doing now is building trade ports in all of my coastal counties, all of my coastal holdings. 
and I've been upgrading them because just at the second upgrade, you can see they get a 10% development growth bonus. So if I go in here and look at our development, you can see right here, we're getting a 10% from this uh, bonus here. So that's super important. So I've just been going through on all my coastal holdings and doing it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do it on even for my vassals because I really think it's that important. So I'm going to go ahead and build one there and build one over here for this guy. Okay, so just as I was explaining that I died, but I'm okay with that um, because my son is amazing. Take a look, he's got some beautiful stats and his learning is already 26, which is honestly awesome. Let's take a look at which perks he got and he already went down, that's perfect. So unfortunately I wanted to leave my sister to her own kingdom here but what happened was she got war declared on her by one of her vassals so she was going to lose the land anyway so i decided just to take it myself so i finally unlocked the battlements uh, innovation which now means i can upgrade all my castles meaning i can upgrade all my buildings in my castles so i'm going to go ahead and start doing that all over my uh, lands because you'll see a lot of these places like if i want to upgrade this to level three I actually have the innovation for it, but I don't have a keep, which is the second level castle. So I have to upgrade that first before I can start upgrading all these buildings down here. So everything is going pretty well in this game so far. I'm increasing my development down here and I'm almost at 29. And it still actually goes up by a good amount because I built up um, these, this trade part to this trade port to tier 4 which is giving me a 20% bonus if we look here you can see all the bonuses I'm getting it's adding up to a ton okay so our player died from old age and now we're playing our son as our son who is 27 let's see it looks like we can hold all of our domains which is awesome don't have to worry about that I just won a battle and I wanted to show you guys so they had a thousand more troops than me we only lost 311 guys and we killed 1,300. So if you look at the details, our war elephants cleaned up 100 war elephants, did tons of damage. So it just goes to show if you're upgrading your buildings and getting tons of men at arms with all your gold income, you can win battles even though you have less men. Also, we should get a look at how quick I'm going to take this. Uh, Take the capital of the people I'm at, I'm at war with. I'm actually helping my sister, who's uh, who I finally allied with, which is cool because now I'll get this lovely renown bonus because we'll have two different kings. So let's see just how quick this goes with a hundred of the second tier siege weapons. Yo, you want to see some real speed, bit? And boom, just like that, we took it, and we're at a hundred percent war score. Okay, so this was pretty unexpected, but. My player, who's only 41 years old, died, and he got the Bad Omen um, unique event right before this, so I don't know if that had something to play into it or not, but it said he died of natural causes. And now, unfortunately, we are playing as our son, who's only uh, 14 years old. I put him on a stewardship focus, and we're above our domain limit, but only by one, so that's really not the end of the world. Okay, so we just became 16. And we got Midas Touch, which is amazing. It gives us um, plus eight stewardship. So now we can actually hold 11 domains. But you can see our learning isn't very high. It's only 11. So I think what I'm going to do is right away go down the learning tree. And I'll probably pick up Restraint, but I might get Scientific first. Just so I can speed up my research speed. Because that is the goal of the game, after all. So we have our first kid as our new player. And unfortunately, she's a little bit scaly, but it's not too bad. I'm going to have one more kid with my wife, I think, and then we'll pick whichever one's the best. I already have the uh, celibacy trait, so I can choose that whenever I feel like I have enough kids, at least. All right, so I decided to have three kids, and they all have genius. I have two sons and one scaly daughter, and uh, I think that's enough for me, so I'm going to go ahead and embrace celibacy so I don't have any more kids. Okay, so I am officially going too fast. So if we take a look, the High Medieval Era, which is our next era, won't be able to... It's not available, there's a hard cap on it until 1050 AD. But unfortunately for us, we literally unlocked every other 
tech in the game right now. That's how fast our speed is. We have 20 years to wait without researching anything because we literally have every single other tech. We just have to sit on our asses pretty much until this time here. I'm worried the same thing is going to happen here in the high medieval area, which can only start at 1200. So I think I made my mind up for my succession this life. I think I will play actually as my scaly daughter because she got this shrewd trait, which honestly I have no idea how you get this trait, but it's very, very good because you have plus two in everything. So she has the best stats out of all my um, characters. Like they're not that good. They all have uh, genius, but because we didn't get either learning or uh, stewardship from their childhood traits, uh, we had to go with diplomacy so they won't be as good. So here we are about to subjugate this kingdom that was to our north. I kind of had an idea of what to do here. I was going to subjugate these guys. And then if I re-inherit one of my sons, which I disinherited, which I think this guy was, restore inheritance. Now, if we take a look at this, both, um, all three of my kids will get a kingdom. So this guy here is going to get the kingdom, um, of Sri Lanka down here and then this guy here is going to get this kingdom in the north which is pretty good because um, it'll generate us a ton more of renown because we already have a family member who owns this kingdom here so we'll have a family member with uh, four kingdoms which I think is pretty cool. Okay so we finally hit the new era and we can start researching some of the new texts to us. I think right away I'm going to go for urbanization because I want to get my development up as high as I possibly can to increase the speed. And you can see it only takes about 23 years. I'm go going down the learning tree with my character, so it's going to speed up a whole lot also. So we just finished getting our first tech of this new era and we went with urbanization to increase the development cap to uh, 55 now. And if we check the development in our lands, you can see if I put it like in my capital, if I actually put it right here where I have um, this wonder, you can see I'm going to be gaining five development. I'm going to be gaining a monthly gross of 5.1 development, which is really crazy from all these bonuses. So that's going to be super cool. You can see if we take a look at the development map that this area here is 35 development, like everywhere around my capital is in the 30s. I think that makes our culture pretty much the best one. There's only two areas that have higher than us, so Constantinople is like 40, but the places around it aren't as high, like the second you get out here it goes lower quickly. And Rome is at 40, so we could catch Rome here if we just steamroll development. Also the cool thing about building um, multiple baronies, that you can hold like castles in one county, let's say this county here, I if I'm over my domain limit I can simply grant it to a low noble. And then if I want to go back in here, I can easily revoke the title from her. And you can see we, we do not um, get any tyranny from doing this, and we only lose opinion with the person I just gave it to, but if it's just a random person, it honestly doesn't matter at all. And they'll always have to accept it. So making these um, like secondary castles in your counties is actually super good, because let's say you have a character who has a little bit less um, stewardship, which means you'll have a less domain limit, you can just grant these away, and then next time when you have a character that has high stewardship, like my daughter, already has 24, she's going to be able to hold a lot of these secondary castles that I just gave away. Okay, we got some bad news here. My only daughter has just died in childbirth, so now my one heir is this, this zero-year-old person, and I'm like 60 years old, so I think I'm going to die pretty soon. So hopefully I can live at least a little bit longer so this kid will grow up. Okay, so my character actually clutched up and lived to be 71. So now I get to play as a 10 year old instead of a zero year old. And that could save this game here because playing as a zero year old is never a good idea, especially if all of your vassals hate you. I just stopped a faction from forming here from uh, befriending one of the th one of the four vassals so hopefully I can keep this just below the threshold where they'll start a war with me but with my income I honestly shouldn't have any problems with any factions because I could always just hire a huge mercenary army to kill everybody so I was just checking out the development again and you can see we now have 46 development in this county here where we have the wonder that's giving us a good boost and we have 39 in our capital we now officially have more development than Rome, who only has 42. 
and Constantinople has 50 now, so we are catching up. Hopefully we will be passing Constantinople towards the end of the game and be the most developed place on the planet. So I just took my Mega Chad army into a battle, so I have 4,000 men, right? And uh, you can see we fought a battle against 10,000 enemy soldiers and we won. We lost 500, which honestly is a pretty high amount, but they lost almost 3,000 soldiers. Just look at this damage. My war elephants killed almost a thousand men on their own. So as it turns out, things are going pretty well for my empire. We are looking really good on this era. I think honestly we'll be done maybe in, in probably like 20 years, 20 or 30 years. We should have all of them done. And then we'll just have to wait again until 1200 AD to be able to unlock the late medieval era. But our realm is doing crazy. We actually can hold 13 holdings right now. We have almost top tier in everything and we have, we're have we getting 130 gold per month. And our develop, development is skyrocketing. Look at these speeds. In this county here, I'm gaining six monthly growth for my development and it's already at 39. It's really the level six shipyards that are increasing my development so much. Because let's say as an example, in this county here, I have one, two, three different level six shipyards which makes the development increase, as you can see here, by 90% having three of those. And then also there's things like in this city here, I think they built, yeah, this Traders Guild, which is also increasing the development by a ton. So all the bonuses are stacking and we are just skyrocketing the development. I just unlocked the True Ruler perk and this gives people a plus 25 modifier on accepting vacillations from you so i've been just been going around and vassalizing a bunch of people so to show you how this works i've just been going around offer vassalization and you can see we have minus six but if i just go here and send him a gift which increases his opinion of us and we have a lot of money to spare we can go over here offer vassalization so low feudal obligations wouldn't work but if i go religious exemption i can offer vassalization and then just like that, he is now part of our land. So I'm just going around and doing it to anybody who isn't a kingdom. So my character is going to die within a year. But as our son is ready to take over for us, he's pretty good. He may be incestuous, but so is my whole family line. So it's not really a big deal. And he already has a good, good looking son here. But what I wanted to show you was we have finished all the texts in the high medieval era. And we still have 56 years to wait until we can start unlocking the late medieval text. I didn't think it would go so quick that I would hit the cap of each era before, before filling out half of these. But we are super quick with our speed. So I literally have not done an offensive war in probably like 300 years in this game. <laughs> but I brought all this land just from vassalizing people nearby. So now it turns out I actually have enough land to found a new empire. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Okay, this is crazy. I just did a subjugation war against these guys because I thought I might as well take the whole continent. The border gore was getting to me. And look at this. We won a battle with 8,000 against 14,000 of their men, and we absolutely smoked them too. It wasn't even close. So it looks like my character is going to be dead within a year, but I think he did a pretty good job increasing the size of our empire. I kind of just got bored waiting for uh, 1,200 AD to come around, so decided to start invading everybody. So we are finally at 1,200 AD. And you can see we are finally getting into the late medieval era. It's going to take two years to get into the medieval era. And I really want to see just how fast we can get all of these texts. All right, so we just hit the new cultural era. I think I have to go for this one that increases the existing development penalty to 90, which will just let our lands develop even faster. And look at that, 10 years only to get this. So you can see we're getting 75% chance from our learning, which honestly isn't that high, but look at the progress per month. We are getting 1.1 progress per month. You can see all of our development is around 50 near our capital, but since I started expanding my lands, the culture has kind of got a bit out of control, like it's spread a little bit to the north, but that's okay because these lands, although they're not 50, they're all around 40. Okay, so I just died as my older player, so now we're playing as my daughter. Okay, so I'm just cleaning up 
some of these little pieces of land that are left over in my empire here. And so I went to war with this kingdom here, and they had a good amount of troops, and look at this battle. So we had 10,000 troops, they had 11,000, and we completely stack wiped them. Could you imagine a battle where an army goes in with 11,000 troops and comes out with 13 people? Stand aside, worthy adversary! Tis but a scratch! So we just finished um, researching Primogenitor, which is pretty cool because now we can actually put in... Um, we can change our succession laws so that only one of our child, one of our children, inherits all our land. So we don't really have to worry about our land splitting up anymore. Which is always good because now we can kind of have as many kids as we want and just choose the best one. So I'm going around increasing some more development in my area. And look at how much development I get per month. You can see we're getting a plus 7.8 right now per month. Absolutely insane. You can see we have development of 55 over here, 60 over here, 55 in our capital. It is actually so high, it's crazy. If you look at this here, we are getting 1.24 progress per month. So if we go to one of the one of the texts that we haven't started researching yet, and we click on it, it's eight years only to research this. And my learning isn't even the highest I've ever had. It's only 29. We should definitely be able to finish every innovation before 1300. If we take a look down here in this land here, we have 61 development now, which should be the highest in the whole world. Here you can see that the Byzantines only have 60. So we officially have the most developed land in the world, and you can see it's still increasing by 5.5, even though we're already at um, 61 because of all these trade ports that we have that are absolutely maxed out. You can see here pretty much all my buildings are maxed out in my land because I just have so much money. Also we have two beautiful kids here, like actually beautiful and genius, which is pretty cool. And I think this guy's scheduled to inherit my land, but really I don't think I'll be playing as my kids because this will probably be my last life. Okay guys, so we just finished researching this innovation here, and now we only have two left, but this one we're getting a bonus. So it's going to take five years, and this is literally the last tech we have for us, because I think these should finish around the same time. So if we click on it, you'll see it says four years. We have 88% chance to gain 1.36. So our average development is 1.06. For it to take four years to finish this is so quick. Like, just look at the development here. 75, and we're still gaining five per month. It's absolute insanity, and it's only 1265 AD. You can take a look at some of the stats that we have here. They're just absolutely insane. We're stacked on like every resource in the game pretty much, especially gold. We have so much gold, it's absolutely ridiculous. 165,000 gold. And I've pretty go. much upgraded every building I could. I'm almost at tier 8 and everything. So right now all we have to do is just wait for those last two innovations to end. Alright, so we're almost done. We only have 10 months left. I'm really just clicking through everything right now. I did not expect this to take so long as it did, but it was really just because we had to wait for the era, the hard cap on the eras to go by. But if that didn't exist, we probably would have had this so soon because I think about 100 years of this game, I was just waiting for the time to tick by so that we could enter the next era. And if you look at this, we literally have 41 days till we get all the technologies from every era 11 days and there we go so we have discovered the fascination we have discovered the innovation of standing armies which means we can have more men at arms but as you can see we are already maxed out on almost everything 82,000 troops 178,000 gold our development is 80 next to our capital our capital is 63 we have the most developed lands in the whole world if we were to do the math, you can see we unlock we unlocked 59 innovations in exactly 403 years. So that means it took us approximately 6.8 years per innovation, which is absolutely mental. Well, I totally enjoyed playing this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it too, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.